This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. I'm going to explain today how to graph lines. All right, let's take a look over here with problem number one, because we're going to do two of them here. Uh, problem number one is going to be a very convenient line to graph because this line is already in slope-intercept form. What does that mean? It means that our y value is alone. It's been isolated, and we have an expression here on the right side. Anytime we have an expression and we've got a value that's in front of x, that value right there in front of x is called the slope. Okay, so we could easily tell what the slope of this line is. The slope of the line is going to be 3. Now the number over here that's alone, that has a very specific name also. It is called the y-intercept. All right, so we can graph this pretty easily when we understand those two things. All right, well, where do we start? We always start with the y-intercept. All right, that just means that this line crosses the y-axis, and again, the y-axis is the vertical line. The, the uh, line is going to cross at negative 2. So on the y-axis, I go down to negative 2, and I put a dot. All right, so there you go. All we need are two dots, and we can draw the, or two points that is, we can draw the line, so we got one already. Now our next challenge becomes finding out where's that other point. Well, if we take a look at our understanding of slope, just remember that uh, this thing called slope is just the slant of the line, and when mathematicians refer to slope, they always say rise over run. Since our slope is 3, and 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1, right? 3 divided by 1 is the same thing as 3. We know now what this is going to look like. We know that uh, from the y-intercept, we need to go rise 3 and then run over to the right 1. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. From this point, I'm going to rise 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I'm going to run over 1. In other words, I run over to the right 1. And once I've done those two moves, vertical and horizontal moves, I now put our, our dot there. So I went up three, one to the right. And there you go. I've got my line because the line is just going to connect those two. Drawing this freehand, so it's kind of hard to draw that. All right. But I've got the line. So the line is going in that direction, up to the right. All right, that was actually fairly easy. So what's the big deal about lines? Well, here comes this next one. All right, it turns out now for this next line, it's a little bit harder. Now, the reason why this one is harder is because I don't have Y alone. So the first job I have to do is to get the Y alone. So that's what I'm going to do down here. I'm going to bring down this equation. I'm going to say, all right, well, here's our equation, 2X plus 5Y equals 5. So to get the y alone, I'm going to get rid of the neg uh, the 2x. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So that'll cancel here. So I get 5y equals, well, I got that negative 2x on the right side, and I also have a positive 5 on the right side. All right, so that was a positive 5 right there. So there you go. I got negative 2x plus 5. Well, I'm almost ready to graph it, but if I can get rid of this 5, I'll have the y alone. So the opposite of multiplying by 5 is to divide by 5. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. All right, 5 divided by 5, that cancels. Negative 2 divided by 5, well, I could get a decimal value. I could break out the calculator. Or I could just say, well, I want to take negative 2 divided by 5, and I'm going to write that as a fraction, negative 2 divided by 5. All right, now remember, I'm dividing everything by 5, so I also have to divide this 5 by 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, and it's positive. So I'm going to put a positive 1 there. All right, so now that I've isolated the y value, the y is all alone by itself on one side. I'm going to graph it just like we graphed the last one. So we start with the y-intercept, so this is how we start. 
All right, so I go to 1 on the y-axis. All right, next I use the slope. If you remember, this value in front of the x is the slope, and then we're going to use that. So according to that, we're supposed to rise up negative 2. Well, you don't rise up a negative. That me really means you're going to go down. I'm going to go down 2. And we always start at the y-intercept, so I went 2 down from the y-intercept. And now I'm going to go 5 units to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so once I've done the horizontal and vertical moves, I have another second point. Now I can draw the line that connects those two points, and I have the line for this equation. And I'm done. All right, so you can see that it's easy to graph when it's in slope-intercept form, which means sometimes we have to get it into slope-intercept form. Once the line is in slope-intercept form, you always start with the y-intercept on the y-axis, and then you use the slope from there to get the second point. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our uh, lesson on graphing lines. It'll even throw you a random problem if you check out the quiz, and you can see if you could do it yourself. All right, take care. Have a great day.